Welcome to Micron's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about Chinese motherboard for the Intel LGA 1200 platform. This one is Maxun B560M Challenger. Detailed technical specification of the motherboard you can find online, you can also see it on my slide. From myself, I can say that even though the motherboard has only two memory slots, it has everything you need for a modern budget-friendly gaming computer. It is also important to mention that it is exactly the same motherboard as Soyo B560M. Maxun is just using Soyo motherboards to sell them under their name. For some reason, Soyo motherboards on AliExpress are costing way much more than Maxun, thus I see no reason to buy Soyo instead of Maxun. Everything I'm going to tell you about Maxun B560M Challenger, you can also apply for the Soyo B560M if you can buy it from Taobao or somewhere else where the prices are not as ridiculous. Much to my surprise, almost everything is working correctly on this Maxun B560M motherboard, thus in this video I'm not going to tell you what I have tested and what is working, instead I'm going to tell you what is not working. And we are going to start with the most interesting part, and of course the most interesting part is the modified BIOS. The default Maxon BIOS does not have CPU voltage control, thus it is not possible to undervolt your CPU. It is very important and you will understand why after my test results. For now, we can flush the modified BIOS where I have unlocked CPU voltage control using the Amif CP tool exactly the same way as you would be flushing the stock or the updated BIOS from Maxon. Detailed step-by-step -step instructions of how to update BIOS on this motherboard you will see on your screen, but in short, you just grab a flash drive, unzip the archive, link to download the archive will be in the video description, put the files from the archive onto the flash drive, plug in the flash drive into your Maxon B560M motherboard, boot from the flash drive, and just wait until the BIOS gets updated. With the updated BIOS, as I said, we will get some extra settings for CPU voltage and CPU current options. For the test results, I have got the following remarks. First of all, on Maxun B560M, we still do not have smartphone for the 3-pin fans. The same as Chinese X79 and X99 motherboards, Maxun B560M can control a rotation speed of PWM for pin fans only. But on this motherboard, we have four fan headers three of which can be adjusted individually and the last one, which is marked as the pump header, is not available for the smartphone function. Not a big deal, but still worth to mention. Sleep mode on this motherboard works, but the resume time is rather long, and thus it might not be very practical for some people. Also, for those who think that two memory slots is not enough, I have tested two 32GB modules for 64 gigs in total. This will be more than enough until you need to upgrade your entire platform. And it's also very nice that this motherboard knows how to recover BIOS settings. For example, if I try to tighten my memory timings too much, or overclock my memory too much, instead of seeing a black screen and being forced to clear CMOS, the motherboard tells me that uh, the booting process failed and it restored the memory settings, and you can try some other settings which might or might not work with your memory. And now let's talk about the biggest issue of Maxun B560M Challenger motherboard. I have tested it with the two CPUs Core i3 10100F and Core i5 11400. With the i3 10100 I didn't have any issues, so the CPU worked exactly as it is supposed to work. But with Core i5 11400 I was not able to achieve 4.2 GHz on all six cores under ADA64 stress test. With my modified BIOS, I have all the possible options, I have removed all the power limits, I have removed the electrical current limits, so this CPU is not throttling. I have also checked the VRM temperatures and it was staying well within the safe ranges. Still, for some reason, this VRM is throttling down and the CPU is clocking down itself to about 3.6 GHz. And here is where we need undervolting. Core i5-11400 is a rather power-hungry CPU. Testing the same CPU on my MSI B560 motherboard, the CPU under ADA64 stress test, maintaining 4.2 GHz on all four cores, consumes more than 135 watt of electricity. This is rather much. So, by applying some undervolting, the CPU will be consuming less power, thus on maximum B560M motherboard it will be able to clock a bit higher. In this particular case, I was able to achieve stable 4.2 GHz under CPU Z stress test and about 3.6 to 4.1 GHz under ADA64 stress test. 
This is more than enough to keep 4.2 GHz on all 6 cores in all games, but it's still not nice that uh, the Maxun VRM is throttling down the CPU, even though the power limits and the CPU current limits are removed and the VRM is staying well within the safe temperature ranges. Nevertheless, I still think the motherboard is a great option for the budget gaming computers, and if you pair it with something like Core i5-10400, which is much less power-hungry than Core i5-11400, you will see no issues. Additionally, I would like to mention that it is important to have fresh Windows installation. First, I have tried to test the motherboard with an old installation of Windows, which was made for X79 and X99 testing, and I have got all sorts of weird issues. Windows was not able to detect the network adapter, and I have got a whole bunch of different undetected devices. After fresh Windows 11 installation, I didn't get any such issues and I was able to get my motherboard working properly. But in this case, I had to manually install Intel INF, Intel IME and serial port drivers. These drivers have to be manually installed for almost every B560 motherboard I have tested, so it is not a Maxun issue. Issue of Maxun is that the drivers they provide on the download page are outdated and the download speed is very slow. That's why I have used a Gigabyte website for the B560 motherboards and downloaded the same drivers for Intel IME, INF and serial port and it worked flawlessly. Also, if you don't trust Chinese websites and would not like to download drivers from them, then follow the link in the video description to the Gigabyte page where I have got my drivers for Maxun B560M motherboard. So, all in all, what can I say about Maxun B560M motherboard? Right now on AliExpress it's been sold for about 80 to 90 euros, sometimes it's a bit higher, sometimes it's a bit lower. And even though the motherboard has two major flaws or semi-major flaws, I still think it's a very great option. The first flaw is obviously the VRM, which is not able to hold 4.2 GHz with my i5-11400, and the second flaw is just two memory slots. Still, if you are limited to AliExpress and you do not have rich second-hand market in your region and you do not have access to things like Amazon and UAG and other big stores where you can buy branded B560 motherboard for a reasonable price, you need to assemble a budget gaming computer using only AliExpress components, then Maxum B560M plus a Core i5-10400 or Core i3-10100 would be a great option. My final score for Maxum B560M Challenger is 7 out of 10, but here it's important to mention that my score is based not only on the product quality and product performance, but also on the product pricing and the current market status. Of course, if in the future the price will go up or down or we will get some other more interesting options, my score for Maxum B560M will be changed. Let's take a look at the potential configuration between LJ2011 version 3 platform and LJ1200 platform. Here I have picked Xeon Fi 2690 V3 to represent LJ2011 platform because it performs very close to Core i5-10400F. For the motherboard I have got 100x99TF, then we are getting two DDR4 memory modules from Clisere and a CPU cooler because Xeon does not come with a CPU cooler. All in all, for this combo on AliExpress, right now you will be paying about 270 euros. Moving to the LJ1200 platform, I am picking my Maxum B560M motherboard, then Core i5-10400F, which comes with Intel stock cooler. The stock cooler is rather bad, but it is enough for most of the use cases, especially if you apply some undervolting on your CPU. And for the memory, I am picking the same class that I did here for memory modules, but this time did here for 3200. All in all, for this combination from AliExpress, right now you will be paying about 275 euros. Thus, the difference between a combination on LJ2011 version 3 and LJ1200 platform is about 5 euros. Even though I really like the Unify 2690v3 as the CPU, it has 12 cores, 24 threads, 3.5 GHz turbo frequency, with its current price and with the current motherboard pricing, I cannot recommend it as the go-to option for gaming computers. Core i5-10400F is a better gaming CPU, it performs either the same or better than Xeon i5-2690v3 in games, and it is not that far behind in productivity. And with this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have liked it, bye bye!